one well sheep let's play hello everyone and welcome to a fantastic game Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy on the Sony PlayStation 3. This game was originally released on the PlayStation 2 and uh, yeah I'm playing this through the HD collection that can be b purchased right now on the PlayStation Network. I would, uh, normally I would play this game through the PS2 but um, you know considering I haven't got all the trophies in this and I plan on doing like a 100% run through I figured why not just tackle this game on the PS3 version you get better picture quality as well out of it. So yeah I'm One Well Sheep and welcome to Let's Play Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy one of the best games that was ever released on the PS2 and when I first played this on the PS2 I was blown away it was just it took everything I loved about the Crash Bandicoot series and made it open world and just Oh, it's so delicious. Without any further ado, this begins, so pressing start now. Down, up, down, up. Gotta do my little sync test. Alright, so um, we're gonna be starting a new game. Uh, let me have a quick check around in the options, though, because I think it was Jack 2 that introduced the... Yeah, Jack 2 introduced the sound. So, there are no subtitles in this game, so I'm gonna need to be extra quiet during the cutscenes. So, I'll probably disable my microphone or something. Anyway, this begin. Cutscenes are pretty long to start off with, so the game's gonna get... It's gonna take about 10 or so minutes to actually get into things, so... Let's do this! Anytime now. I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose? And why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> So it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey, uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk! Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly! <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time! Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! Man, that stung! I told you! 
told you we shouldn't have come here, and you listened! What? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Tarnation, do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right. And then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man. Are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer, at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. <laughs> Get in there, before I turn you both into ferns! And welcome everybody to Geyser Rock, the very first sort of level of the game and the only thing that's really separated from the main world, because one of the biggest things about this game is the fact that you, if you see something in the distance, you know, some if, if you look over there, the, those mountings and such, we're actually going to go there later. This this game has a gigantic draw distance, which means if you see it, chances are you're going to go there. And if you go... and That was one of the big sound points about the game, because no game before this that I know of actually did something of this level. This was one of the first games to really take advantage of the then-was-new Crash... Not Crash Bandicoot, what am I on about? Then-was-new PlayStation 2 power, so... This device is a communicator. With it, my father and I can give you advice at any time during your quest. Thanks a lot, Kira. And, uh, yeah, that, like she said, that thing's a communicator. It'll pop up every now and then and give us obligatory little tutorial messages. But, um, yeah, let's just continue onwards through the sort of the only thing that can really be considered a level. This area is a little very linear, but once we go into the main world, we're pretty much free to go wherever we want. So, Circle button will do a kick move, basically the same spin attack that Crash Bandicoot had. Because, like I said, this is pretty much the spiritual successor of the Crash series. But what's new is, if you press R1 button, you can actually crouch on the floor. Uh, if you press the square button while holding down R1, you can actually do an uppercut. Press the square button on its own to do a punch. And if you press square then X, you can also do an uppercut that way. And uh, square in the air will actually do a ground pound. And uh, if you press R1 while rolling, well, while running, you can do a roll. If you press the X button while rolling, you do a long jump. So it's a very simple controls to get into. It's very standard platforming controls at this point. These floating egg-shaped things are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them, and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. 
I would say Happy Easter, but I'm pretty much a month late for that, so um, yeah, we need to collect these things. Now, these are really important to get. You don't need all of these in the game to actually get 100%, but collecting these uh, Precursor Orbs will allow you to gain more of Power Cell things, which are those things but there. And uh, we want to get as many of those as possible, because they are basically our plot MacGuffins of the game. So if you anyone's played Mario 64, they have the same function as the stars, or Banjo-Kazooie, same function as the jigsaw pieces, you know. So let's just get going, move on. You can destroy these uh, little dummies as well for a little training, but they're not really... They're kind of pointless, to be honest. They're just there. You don't get anything for blowing them up. This is a power cell. The most important precursor artifact you can find. You need to collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your A-grab zoomer. We'll be getting 20 of these things in no time at all, but yeah, we get tons of these throughout the entire game. They are very, very useful MacGuffins, and you can't beat the game without them, because otherwise you'd be trapped in the first area of the game. And yeah, I understand, this game has autosave. Now those red boxes were there before the game's going to cut in and actually explain it. Basically, if you do a ground pound on them, you can open them up, and they'll, they'll bring out a giant fly sort of thing. A couple of... Sp I I'll leave her explain the flies, actually. Let me just uh, break this open. Boom. So basically, break all seven skull flies within a single area and you'll get yourself a power cell. It's always the last one that gives you a power cell, so I don't know, maybe Jack has very bad luck with that sort of thing. But let's just grab this, grab the power cell, there we go. We're basically going to be finishing up this entire tutorial area for this video and then start moving on into the main world because, you know. Wow! That last skull fly had a power cell! I'll bet if you collect all seven in each area, you can find even more power cells. That's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. So yeah, this Blue Eco pretty much serves as multiple power-ups in a single go. It acts like a lightning shield from Sonic the Hedgehog, so it'll suck in everything in the environment nearby. Um, green Eco, which is this green stuff we're picking up here, as Samos is saying and I'm talking over him, basically counts as like sort of health, so we can gain a lot of health. This is a precursor door. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling Blue Eco through your body. Please stop interrupting me. So yeah, as you said, Blue Eco, if, you, if you're if you channeling that stuff, go to one of these doors or anything similar in a similar style and it'll activate something. So that's why I used to do it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's the... What's the button? Alright, L2 is the main thing. So as you can see, my heart's on the top left of the screen. Now I have, I have currently have three hearts and 50 green green eco things. Now for every, every 50 green eco pellets equals one new health. You know, one new health piece. So every time you get 50 small ones or one giant one, it counts as 50 green pellets that allows you to utilize another health slot. Once you have all three slots um, actually filled up and you get 50 uh, eco, it'll pretty much look like it looks like now and you'll have a fourth hit point that kind of acts like a shield just in case. Health uh, health isn't too big an issue in this game, it's quite easy That's to survive. The blue eco vent. More concentrated than the floating clusters, this vent will give you a full charge of blue eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. Thank you, Kira. So yeah, like she said, this will, um, as you can see, there's a bar on the bottom right of the screen. If you go to the bar, if, I mean, as as time goes on, the bar will empty, depending on how much blue eco we have. So it's very, and those air vents will basically give you a full charge so the bar is fully complete, Good but, work. you know. The blue eco caused the door to open. With blue eco, you can breathe energy into all kinds of precursor artifacts that have laid dormant for years. And he's not joking with that, Blue Eco is probably one of the most used power-up in the game. We're going to be using a lot of power-ups as time goes on, but so... Those little green balls of energy on the ground are a type of Eco. Pick up 50 small green Ecos, or one big green one, to increase your health. Ah, I thought you explained that earlier. Okay then, I guess I explained it for no apparent reason, so let's just grab these, be sure to do a high jump here. And uh, we're pretty much almost done with the tutorial section, like I said, it's a very short area. 
I know he's telling us about a double jump. If you press the X button twice, you can do a double jump in the air, which is always well and good. Also, the music is very ambient. I do like the music. Anyway, let's just grab this last power cell and head off out of the tutorial. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Also, I love those little animations and stuff that Jack and Daxter do. This is a very well animated game, and Naughty Dog, as always, are pretty proud about their animations. So, um, let's just activate this lift and move down onwards and uh, get ready. So, push the switch. It's time to head on back to Green Sage's Hut. Press the circle button to activate this thing, and uh, yeah, you can press triangle button exit. So, let's just go see what uh, old Samos Green Sage has to say to us now. Boom! Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. Ah, then no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're, uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! Okay, okay, calm down. Let's not need to be that mean. So yeah, now the world's basically opened up. It's Like I said, it's very quick to actually get into this game. And you see everything in the environment out there? Everything. Well... We can now journey across onwards and uh, explore every inch of this land, which we're going to. But we're going to do that next time, folks, because it's the end of the video here. And it's been a... There hasn't been much going on in this video, but trust me, next time, things are really going to start picking up when we start getting our missions and things to do. So, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed, appreciate a like or comment to the video. Don't be sheepish, people, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!